Um, we want to thank everyone for uh, joining us here for our, our we can just call this a concerned citizen meeting uh, because we're meeting together to, you know, uh, voice our concerns uh, of the conduct of the, the uh, Bladen County Board of Education. Uh, at this time, we do also want to acknowledge Dr. Bates' parents for being here and her sister. Uh, thank you all so much. Um, I know this is a lot for you all to deal with. And um, I can't even imagine what you all are going through right now, but we uh, we stand in support. We support you. Um, we hate, we're here for you, and we stand with you uh, through all that you, through all that you go through. Um, so again, we thank all of you because I know you all have busy schedules, but uh, obviously that it's obvious that you all are concerned about uh, what's going on in the county, and, and that's good. Um, uh, it, it's it's sad that what has happened has occurred uh, the past few weeks. Um, but um, I believe that it's, God has brought us together for a reason. And sometimes, you know, when we come together for a good cause, change occurs, and uh, I believe change is gonna occur. Uh, so as we prepare to get started, we're gonna ask for Reverend Hayes to uh, lead us in prayer at this time. Father, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you for this county. We thank you for these folks who have come out. Father, our hearts are broken because we have to be here. First of all, we will want to continue the leadership that Dr. Bay presented to this county. And Father, we want to thank you for our past crossing of Dr. Bay. We ask your care. We ask your to give some kind of closure to Mr. and Mrs. Beatty, sister Lord. Lord. We ask you to bless these folks that are here tonight, the very best that heaven holds. We thank you for our social media that's here, Ms. Charlotte Smith, Lord. We ask you to minister to her. Use media, Lord, to her life. We ask you to touch every heart and home that's represented. Father, with that said, we ask you to give us guidance. Father, we ask you to, that you would let our voices be heard, Lord, and not to be silent. That we would lift up your name in our actions as we go forth. Father, we ask you to give mercy to those that would oppress us or hinder us. That there would never be no ill will, Father. Father, we ask you to give us strength that we would never be moved out of our character as Christians, that we would go forth representing you and uplifting your name. Father, now I ask thy Holy Spirit to dwell fresh with us now as we continue. We ask this in the only name that matters, Jesus Christ and all of God's people. Amen. 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 Again, thank you all so much uh, for joining us. I know there are some who are asking the question, um, what is the purpose of this meeting? Um, I actually read a comment and I, <laughs> I wasn't gonna respond to it, but I couldn't let it go. And the comment said that, you know, the meeting is not gonna bring her back. And, you know, even though us meeting together may not bring Dr. Beatty back, us coming together for this cause, is still gonna be some good that comes out of it. Um, <laughs> somebody wrote, I, I, I was gonna, somebody wrote in the post, you know, why are we stirring the pot? And then in the same post, <laughs> somebody said, those who stir the pot should have to lick the spoon. I would have to say I'm prepared to lick the spoon. Me too, me too. <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever comes off that spoon, I don't care. I'm prepared to lick all of them. Um, what was done, in my personal opinion, was unfair. It was uncalled for. And until the board gives some type of transparency and some type of reason of why, I personally would not be satisfied. Um, 
Now, I've been on YouTube looking at various board meetings, and um, I found a session from from May, this this uh, this month. If I'm not mistaken, the board meeting was held at E Town Middle School, mm -hmm. E Town Middle School, <coughs> and there were some items on the agenda. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong, please somebody tell me I'm wrong. But there were some items on the agenda that were not on the public agenda, but they were on the board members' agenda. So there were some items that only the board members knew that there was what they were voting for, voting on. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong, please somebody tell me. Um, I came across the last board meeting at the uh, e Town Middle School, and there was an item on the board members' agenda, and I believe it was item B, all right? Item B. And so, this is a sound bite from item B. Okay, so that was action item B. Now I read the paper and the, the report. The report said that Dr. Beatty's uh, contract was not renewed due to a lack of motion. Now I wasn't at the meeting, so I'm trying to put pieces of the puzzle together. This was the last meeting, and there was a lack of motion on item B. The public didn't know, I don't think the public necessarily knew what action item B was. The board members knew. The issue I have is this, no board member made a motion, made a move, nothing on action item B. But the very next item, they voted on it. They made a motion on it. So my question is, how is it that the whole board can come together and not make any type of movement on action item B. Nobody, nothing, zilch, zero. And I wanna know what happened because now this is just my personal opinion and I could be wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm wrong, I, you know, I, I, would, I would admit I'm wrong at times, you know. But in my personal observation, what it seems like looking from the outside in, it looks like this was a consorted effort. Nobody made a move on this motion, on, on this on this particular item. You know, nobody. Now I've been to board meetings before, and there were I, there were times when the board could not agree. You had yays, you had nays. Sometimes you had all yays and you had a few nays. But on this item right here, you had a nay. You, you didn't have nay. You didn't have yay. You had nothing. So I'm trying to wrap my mind around how was such a qualified person? Needless to say, if we could be honest in this room, who was actually more qualified than the person sitting in the highest position on the board or, uh, or in the, uh, in the um, uh, as superintendent, had more credentials, was, was more qualified. How is it that her contract was not renewed? But when you go back to April's meeting, there was another item B. Again, the public did not, I don't think the public was privy to the information of what the action item B was. Well, they were supposed to be though. Supposed to be, mm -hmm. yes. As a matter of fact, I read, um, I've been trying to do some research. There are some schools, uh, uh, some school boards, they actually open certain inf this information up to the, or up to the public. The uh, superintendent's pay raise, the salary, the, the incentives. But this board decided not to for some reason. And I believe that because we are tax paying citizens, we should in fact know where our tax dollars are going and how our tax dollars are being spent. That, that, you know, that's just me, you know. I mean, if we're going to give a, a superintendent a substantial, hefty raise, I want to know this because, again, my tax dollars are being spent, <laughs> and we should be privy to that type of information. But as, as Charlotte alluded to, um, they are, you know, supposed to open this type of information up to us. But I guess 
this board elected not to, but going back to April action item B, a personnel a uh, action, uh, I believe that was when the, the uh, superintendent's uh, uh, contract was extended to, to, to 2025. He was given a pay raise, and according to the, to the uh, paper that I read, I uh, was given uh, um, the, uh, this, this, the county, per se, the taxpayer dollars are now going to pay for to further his education. Now, I just feel like this is just me speaking personally. Um, if you want to get a raise, you should be able to pay for your own education because there were others who, who had to pay for their education who the county didn't pay for, but they, they worked hard to get the credentials that they need to get to where they were able to, uh, to get to. But what is different about this case? What 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 is different? You know what 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 is you know what is really going on? And I just want, uh, and, and and I believe many others really want the board to be transparent. What is really going on? You know what what is going on behind closed doors? Who who is rubbing elbows with who? Because sometimes it gets to the point where I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. You give me what I want, I'll give you what you want. And I just want some transparency. Again, I mean, I believe many others, you who are present, you want transparency as well. Um, I submitted a certified letter to the board um, asking them for a, a, an, an official form with the public so that they can talk to the public. Talk to us and let us know what's going on. Let, let us know how you, uh, how you came up with certain, uh, how, how you, uh, proceed with certain procedures and how you voted the way you did. You know, let us know. Give us some understanding, because right now, with the lack of understanding, it's hard to get closure. It, it, it's hard to get closure when you're not telling us why you came up with what you know. You know, explain why you're not explaining to us how you did what you did and why you did what you did. So um, I have not heard anything back yet from the board. Um, I'm trying to be optimistic, but I don't think I'm going to hear back from the board. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, just just trying to, uh, to you know, uh, you know, and of course we want to get the feedback uh, from the public as well. Definitely, definitely want to hear from the family as well. Uh, just trying to um, just trying to get some idea as to um, what ways can we be effective and in, uh, in, in getting with the board. Uh, to uh, to to be able to be in position to <coughs> ask certain questions to get the transparency that we desire. Uh, so I want to uh, just open it up uh, to the public. If anyone has any ideas, uh, there is another board meeting um, coming up in uh, next month. I think next month. And uh, you know, they, again, you know, just wanting to hear, just wanting to get some type of transparency from this board because it seems, it, it seems as though when I look at this, I had to take a pause when I looked at this video right here because initially when I saw it, I got angry. I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I got angry. You know, you know <laughs> I love God, I love the preach, I love going to church, <laughs> but I got angry, you know, because again, nobody made a move. No lack of motion, you know, here you have a person who gave 28 years to this county, to the county schools. 28 years. And I, I use this analogy that she was married to the school system here. I, I, I had a customer that came in, talked to me today, and she said, she, I, she said, she trained me. She taught me what I knew. You know, and uh, she said, she looked out for me. So many people have said this. And, and I believe two people can't tell the same lie. So if everybody's saying the same thing about it, she looked out for me. She cared for me. She, she made sure I was, I was taken care of. So many people have said that. So now, I'm, again, I'm asking the question, how and why did this happen at the last board meeting? What happened and why? I, I, we need some transparency. We need some transparency. Uh, the, the, the uh, floor is open for the. Uh... I would like to say, just listen to what you have to say. <clears throat> we may be where we are today, but we were born where that we are. And I can say that for myself. But in my opinion, 
from different experiences. Follow that money. And when you follow that money, you're going to find the infidelity. So somewhere down the line, when money gets involved, it's getting changing hands and people know certain information and all. And then you have a person that's a threat mm -hmm. to that. Now, that makes a dangerous situation. Also, in my experiences and, and things, just like here is a person that loves something the way that she loved it. It's hard to convince me mm -hmm. that they would end their career that way. Mm -hmm. But what some folks will never understand, how you can be forced to do things. Mm -hmm. Anybody could have walked in her home, mm -hmm. threatened her with things that we know nothing about. Mm -hmm. Got guys that got family voices on it, saying if you don't do this, then this is gonna happen, they're afraid. You gotta look at it in more ways than one, but I still say, and I put my heart on it, if you follow the money, you'll find the infidelities mm -hmm. that lead to this conversation. Mr. Lyons, if I could. You know how the term came around. It's just um just for nobody to make the motion, that's sufficient evidence for us to all conclude that there was a meeting before the meeting. Mm -hmm. And they had to come together and they knew exactly what they were gonna do. Mm -hmm. Now this is a speculation because I got this from the horse's mouth, mm -hmm. uh, that there was a Title IX complaint filed against one of the board members mm -hmm. by Dr. Becky. Mm -hmm. The board member made it seem as if it was um just something that she concocted and that it was fabricated, mm. but uh, working with Title IX is very serious. Mm. And I don't believe that Ms. Bailey or anybody mm. with common sense would file a fraudulent complaint because mm. if she was a Title IX coordinator, deputy director, or whatever it was with Title IX, she knew that stuff because she had to go through extensive training. And if there was, well, since there was um, a complaint filed, I'm sure that she had documentation as to why that complaint, and she would have known mm. that it was gonna stick. And so I think, just in my mind, that that may have been, that may have been retaliation because of that. Mm -hmm. It's very unfortunate that that happened, but sometimes when you do speak out, or you say, this isn't right, then it puts the target on your back. And I think um, that's exactly what happened uh, to Dr. Becky, mm -hmm. is that it was a retaliation of that. So nobody can make the most of it. As you said, uh, friends of mine, you said that that meant that nobody considered her, which was a slap in the face um, after so many years of service. And to have a board that, you know, I did talk to one board member and had the question, how did the superintendent get the position? And I was told that Dr. Taylor groomed him for the position, and that's how we got it. But the bottom line is, I mean, you can tell that to anybody. Bottom line, the board had to vote to put them in there. Mm -hmm. the, you can groom, so I've seen people get groomed all day long, but if they don't vote for them, that's it. <laughs> so they got they put the person in place that they want in place, and they don't mind stepping on toes. We have a lot of teachers that don't get master's level pay. Um, different credentials, you don't get compensated to go back to school. You don't get time off from work to go back to school. You, a lot of times, they don't get pay raises. But to pay for someone who is not qualified to serve in a position and to pay such a hard salary. I do know that Dr. Taylor, if I'm not mistaken, he was on a year-to-year -year contract. Mm -hmm. And now you have this gentleman who was left credentialed to go in and, and have an extensive contract. Um, not only, what, three years? In addition to that, they took out a pause that they, they could not terminate this contract mm -hmm. prior to the end of the contract. So they're pretty, unless he does something illegal, they're saying, we're going to keep you in place. And I think uh, we could dance around it, we can tap dance, and, but we all know what it boils down to. Um, Y'all look like, oh, oh, don't go there. But that's just what it is. <laughs> uh, it boils down to a certain thing. There's different sets of rules for different people. Yeah. And yeah. whenever you break a rule, that's it. Now, some other people will get chance after chance after chance. But I think that um, because of that Title IX complaint, and someone needs to address that and ask what it was, there should be some type of documentation. Because when you file a Title IX complaint, there is a process that you have to go through. There has to be an investigation. And all we know is that there was something that was filed and nobody has talked about the outcome. Nobody has produced any type of evidence as to interviews with different people, what was said, what was speculated, nothing. Uh, they also said uh, there are some other issues that were going to, this person really got down in, in the nitty gritty. And so whenever folks are feeling that their backs are against the wall, they'll start pulling at anything. If somebody drowning, mm -hmm. they don't care who they pull out with them, they're gonna try to survive one way or another. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where they are now, uh, the board. So we just have to hold their feet to the fight, but I definitely thought that was worth mentioning 
uh, for you to request that mm. um, that Title IX document or the Title IX complaint and to read through and look at the interviews. And they may not have done anything with it at all, but it, it's good to see if they did and then who was, what was exactly, what was done. Because actually, according to the uh, Blake County Schools policy, uh, policy code 1760 uh, uh, backslash 7280, prohibition against retaliation. That oh, yeah. is a prohibition against any type of retali retaliatory uh, actions against uh, uh, those who are employed by the Blaine County Schools. And so, if in fact this was an act of retaliation, those board members should be relieved of, of, duty, of duty. That's what I'm, I'm just saying. You know? We have requested the emails for Dr. Atkinson, Dr. Beatty, mm -hmm. um, and some other personnel. We've done a public records request to see if we can get the emails to see if we can find information like what you're referring to. But Dr. Atkinson, he also worked with IT. Right. So if, there, if you request an email, uh, that stuff can be deleted from the server. I heard mm -hmm. that the server so happened to go down on last or well, on that Wednesday, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever day it was, it was serving for them. No one could access emails or anything. Mm -hmm. So I think. Mean, but we, uh, are Title IX complaints handled internally? It all, it depends. Who is that Title IX? They have Title IX officers and deputies, different right. folks that are selected to go. Right. So is it totally handled internally, or is there? If this is a good Title IX complaint, yeah. it goes to the EEOC. Yeah. And if I understand correctly, an, e, if well, an EEOC person did come down. Am I, am I right about that? No, I'm not sure about that part. Okay. I have heard that. I, I mean, I can't verify that, but I know it has to go to the EEOC. Once that complaint's filed, it's got to go forward. Do I understand him correct? So you're saying that Dr. Beatty filed a complaint? Yeah. Yes. Then why can't we? Get what Dr. Beatty is it going to be public? If it's public, we can get it. Uh, I think well, somebody could probably go through EEOC office out of Raleigh and find that out because yeah. okay. they were, I mean, that's public record. Yeah, they would have a they would have a record of that. Well, that this to me answers a lot of questions that I haven't had answered yet. If she filed a complaint. Charlotte and I was talking today and asked has we invited the, the uh, City Police, let's tell City Police. No, we haven't because we're trying to get together a letter, Corey and I and you folks, a letter so that we can present and be, uh, we got to act with a lot of diplomacy. We don't want to have to come back six weeks into this thing and say, well, we made a mistake. We want to have everything in order. I think that's the way Dr. Betty would have had it. So. If this is it, we may have something here that hadn't been revealed yet, and there needs to be an investigation into it. Who's HR person for it? Do I? Who's HR person? Dr. She Bates. Bates. Right. Who's HR person now, is what I'm saying? In the county? They haven't named anybody. They haven't named anybody? Okay. The lady Tanya was in the office with her, right? Yeah, her assistant. Yeah, Tanya and oh, sorry, I mean, Crystal right Johnson it was her executive secretary. So if, if Ms. Beatty, Dr. Beatty filed, an, filed a Title IX complaint, she was the HR person, it would have gone straight to the uh, office in Raleigh. EEOC, well, we need to get EEOC someone would to have that. check into that. Yeah, yeah, EEOC would have that. Can you check into that? I'll, I'll see if I can find out something. Do that. Uh, My question is, what laws did the board members break? Did they break any laws? If if this was any type of any type of act of retaliation, they broke policy. The well, they broke policy within the uh, within the guidelines of the uh, um, the manual of the Blake County Schools. Um, law wise, I have to look I have to look more in depth into that. Am I right though in assuming they've skated the they've skated the open meeting laws because mm -hmm. this they could argue that this is a personnel matter and right. they had the right to go to a closed session. Right. As far as the, technically, that, I'm not I was saying it's right, but legal yeah. defense that they they had the right to do what they did. Right. Right. But what they did was 
unethical. Right. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah one thing they can't do in closed session is take a vote. Yeah. They have to take that vote in session. But according to the statute that I read, back it up to Dr. Atkinson's um, contract mm -hmm. renewal and raise, that was supposed to be noted on the open session agenda mm -hmm. that they would be discussing the superintendent's con contract and you that just can't discuss the details of it. Right, right but that was not on the open agenda mm -hmm. i just wanted to add one thing so as far as policies and and i think that somebody get, some of this gets screwed around because they do the contracts but a um a career employee and i'd have to look it up but a, a career employee may not be terminated unless it's recommended by the superintendent mm -hmm. that's, that's the policy and procedure. Yeah. so and if you if you move into this thing i guess one of the things that bothers me that's just kind of a red flag is in april the board said in my opinion they said you know we have all the confidence in the world in you dr atkinson we're we're going to extend we're going to give you a new three-year contract mm -hmm. When he still had a year left in the existing, so it didn't even need to be dealt with right now. Right. So we're going to redo this contract, remove that clause, add some money, and then, according to their statement, uh, and from everything that that we're probably all hearing, the and based on your soundbite, the superintendent recommended mm -hmm. that she that her contract be renewed. Right. And if you look at that entire agenda, there was about a hundred. I'm, I didn't count them, but there's probably 100 contracts that were renewed that night. Mm -hmm. And they accepted that recommendation on 99% of those. And on, you know, there was only the two that weren't renewed. So I'm, whoever said it a while ago, obviously, in my mind, there had to be some conversation beforehand that said, hey, Which I've got to recommend this or not. I don't, you know, I don't know how or when or who, you know, who made these decisions. But the, the superintendents did recommend to the board that her contract be renewed, and then it didn't get a motion. So in my mind, unless they're skirting around it with this contract deal, that that was a career employee that was terminated without the recommendation of the superintendent, which would certainly be a policy violation. And then, in, again, in my mind, if you were so confident in the superintendent that we just stamped everything else that was recommended, why did we have these two contracts that didn't get, that didn't get approved? That's just my thinking through the whole. That and it out. appears that he did that to kind of absolve himself yes. of any responsibility yes. so that he could say, well, I recommended it, mm -hmm. but the motion died. Mm -hmm. So it takes the responsibility away from him, right. even though y'all had to meet before the meeting and he knew what y'all was going to do yes. and to put, present it in a way where he didn't look like the bad guy. Mm -hmm. That's right. It seems like with all this going on, that a board member would say, look, yeah, this is So that, I mean, to me, that's, to 
basically you you push the person in a place where they felt like there was no return, mm -hmm. then it's a slap in the face to carry out your agenda. I watch movies and a lot of times they'll lay low and then come back with the agenda. But with these folks, they're vicious. And, you know, and it's all the talk with all of the powers to be that's in position saying, well, we didn't force her, this is all on Facebook. Well, we didn't make her, that was her choice. Mm -hmm. But when there's enough pressure, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't become your choice anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you're meeting the demand. So that, that to me, we need to speed up the process in addressing this before that happens. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, have we sent them a have we sent the board a letter? Letting them know that we were like, we have a question. They don't have a hidden agenda. Send them a list of the questions. And when we all meet, they can address those questions. Or if they don't want to meet, send us the questions, the answers to the questions. But we need to hear something from them. If they don't want to meet with us, send them a list of questions. Let them send us the answers. Then we can, we can count if it's not satisfaction. But there's a lot of discrepancies going on currently right now within the board and Right now, our focus is on, on this situation, but there's a whole lot of others there that we we subject to lose, and they get sick of being pushed aside, and then we have folks in position who clueless. That also speaks to the fact that really, this is more than just what happened mm -hmm. in that week. Mm -hmm. Clearly, there has been a toxic work environment mm -hmm. for a very long time. That's right. And when yep. you think about being involved in a toxic work environment and then you hear people say all the time you know I can't believe I can mm. because you don't know what that does to a person's mental health when you're going in to the fire every single day and you don't know where the darts are coming from you don't know who's out to get you all of these different things and that takes a toll on a person's mental health and so often we never see it coming, but we have to make sure we pay attention to the mental health support that our educators have because they're under a lot of undue stress every single day. And the stress that she was put under to be pushed from your office to the back of the building, to be cut out some conversations and not always knowing what's going on um, we don't know what she was going through for the year and a half that even led up to this point. And we have to look at that as well. But when, and when we look at coming through COVID and the amount of stress that educators at every level were under with little to no support, you know, it, it takes a huge toll. And I'm just going to tell y'all being a black woman, in any profession, when you walk into a room and you know that you have your ducks in a row, the target is on your back from Jump Street. That's right. And as squared away as she was, the target has been on her back for a long time. Yeah. Black women do not have the luxury to make a mistake. We do not have the luxury to fall apart, to break down, to cry, or what, that's not a luxury that is afforded to us you have to have it together at all times and when you go home you can cry there but when you step out when you have to go and be in front of people when you have to present when you have to leave when you have to help these teachers through you don't have that ability so when people say i never saw that coming you need to find ways in which we can help those especially those who are considered strong those are the ones who a lot of times need the most support a lot of times and the mental health and the state of education right now is on a decline um, from educators to the students that we're teaching and it seems like there are no resources available and that needs to be looked at as well in terms of the transparency of how our tax dollars are being spent and what support are we given because she did not deserve this, but at the same time, this has been Bladen County forever. <laughs> and we know how they have been dealing forever. And if we don't get a hold on it and push and keep your foot on their neck, it will happen again in some way, shape, form, or fashion. 
So it's, it's very important that we look at the, the resources that are also being put towards mental health services for our educators because it is critical at this point. Here you said something that was so interesting, but I don't want to channel that, I'm going to address it for me, but we are looking at baby that have any children, biological children, but that job was her baby. I mean, she did an excellent job. I knew before she was Miss Baby, I'm sorry, we got the baby when she was Miss Baby, and we know the tough job that she had at West Blaine High School. Whenever she went there, and she stood still, she stood firm, and those that didn't like her, uh, she was black and white. Mm -hmm. And she was matter of fact, and she did things by the book. Right. If somebody, the only reason why you have an issue with her is if you're a person that cut corners. Right. And you want to do it a different way. But what you mentioned uh, earlier as you were talking, you were talking about mental health. And one of the board members, uh, because I had a, I won't say what it was, I had a conversation with someone, they said that she moved to the back of the building. And they fed it to me and said, and I just went along with it, I just listened. Mm -hmm. um, but I've worked a lot of jobs and never have I been afforded the opportunity to move my office whenever I felt like right. And to determine where I moved my office. Right. That was ludicrous. Mm -hmm. But they're they're trying to find things that will stick. Right. Uh, they want to feed us bologna and tell us it's filet mignon. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. this goes to show whenever they talk about mental issues mm -hmm. and things in there so that they're throwing out, right. it lets us know just by based on what has happened mm -hmm. that it wasn't um, paranoia. Mm -hmm. right. She was dead on right. with everything that she suspected. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was dead on it. Sometimes, not to bring religion into it, God will give you uh, a warning. And he'll let you see things even before they happen. So she knew that something was being planned or something mm -hmm. was being plotted. And so folks used it, oh, something wrong, something going on, you're paranoid. Mm -hmm. No, they were plotting the whole entire time mm -hmm. and this whole thing. Um, but I will say this, is that we have set back, we've seen a lot of things go on mm -hmm. here in Black County. And we've mm -hmm. said nothing mm -hmm. for too long. Yeah. So I commend you. Uh, Pats and Lions, but we've got to hold that feet to the fire. Right. That's what happened whenever it's hot, we'll stay on top of it, and then we start trickling mm -hmm. down. Like, oh, well, that was last year. That was two months ago. But and that's, that's what they're counting on. Was that? That's what they're counting on. Oh, I'm sure. I'm Us sure. backing down. And I'm sure they have an attorney. Yeah. If they were being honest, mm -hmm. and if nothing was being fabricated, right. then they could just have an honest conversation with folks without mm -hmm. having things legally put in place. But that's her mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I know that she's hurting her dad and mm -hmm. Andrika and Josh. And, yeah. But folks are hurting yeah. Yeah. and they want answers. Mm -hmm. And for the board to say we have to be unified and they're coming up with all these stories and different theories and things of that sort, it just needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. It needs to be addressed. I think that what we're doing is good. But this meeting is about moving forward. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of corruption in our county, and this is the door to open concerned citizens. I work with the Democratic Party chairperson, Brother Lon. He's the NAACP chapter. We're working together on this thing. We have talked to the Republican chair, and he's willing to move in. If we can go forward as concerned citizens together, I love to, this is the key to open the door to stop some of the things that's going on. She was advanced in education and her quality was far much greater than the superintendent or anybody on that board. We can take this. Corey and I got together, wrote some questions. But we got to get together. If you have any questions, please send them to Corey or myself. You can have our email address, whatever, our telephone number. We're morning later. So that when we meet, if they don't come to us, we're going to them. And we need to have, wait a minute, Mike. We need to have this stuff in order and in line so that when we get there, what I would like to see tonight is for that to take place. And I believe I'm speaking for my pastor also. Number one, though, I would like to see something in this county that will carry Dr. Beatty's name right on till after I'm gone home and others. 
So when they look at that or say that, say Dr. Betty and bring her name up and tell what kind of person she is. Her legacy needs to live on. We can form a scholarship. We can form a scholarship for education and select a person. It needs to be a black girl, lady. I'll be honest with you. Yes. For her, for her sake. And make sure that child gets that so that she can become a doctor. So that maybe she can become a superintendent. Maybe she can make a change in Bladen County. We gotta do something, folks. I'm willing to give in to it. We need to do that. So I want you to keep that in mind. Corey and I sit down and come up with some questions. So don't send the same question.
guys get the buffalo style of school system and see how the one function. Who was in that school, ran that school, what they were talking about. And see what pressure can be asserted on everybody that pertains to the education system. Y'all, this is a mess. When we said the children are in a mess, not just in Blaine County, everywhere. It's a mess going on. When you see things happen, and parents are calling, outrage. Some of you guys in here will call if your child is not receiving certain things and be outraged from you say they're right, they shouldn't have it. You call and say, my grandchild, my child, why can't you teach my child? Why can't you do this to my child? You need to hire somebody. I don't care where you get it from, ain't you got the money? No. It's certain issues that we look at this thing, and I'm not saying let's take this baby in. Say, oh, she was in a situation bad, she was. And it was just some things that I think were shifted to her. Because you got to understand, again, what position she held. She held a position that everybody was trying to get off of their back. Everybody was trying to get it off of their back. All the boys around the superintendents, everybody, is trying to figure out how to give that quality education to the children that they serve. She had all that on the show. And it was a very difficult task for her to find out. I'm telling you, and I can tell you something around. Walk inside of the school system in Blake County and spend a day there. Just spend a day. And see what goes on inside of the school system. Not that I say the school system is not working, but it's doing the best it can. But you need to go see what the message, what you're working with. Everybody can go to the school system. When you start assessing things, evaluating things, you can give a true reflection of what you see. Because I live and say, a teacher leave, and you have to ask yourself, if you did, why they leave? Mm -hmm. You have to ask that question. Why are they leaving? Why won't they stay? Well, you might be able to walk in in the new school year, but not right now, because right. schools are operating under COVID protocols. Mm -hmm. So if you're not personnel, you're not getting in. Okay, so you need to go in there. Our school is in a mess. I agree with you 100% right that. Now. Our schools are in a mess. And we don't have, we have qualified teachers. But we don't have enough qualified teachers. But, you know, the teachers are not going to be able to do that. That's not going to be able to do that. But, you know, if that's the problem, and we're looking at the problem, then we got to look at, like you said, the source of the problem. We got the board, and we got a superintendent. And until we do something about that, we're going to have the same old, same old the next year. And if we don't do something this time, we ain't going to get something this year. And we'll be meeting, and there'll be more Dr. Babies, and, and it'll continue right on. we got to do something. We can sit back and analyze why Dr. Why Dr. Baby did what she did. We're not going to know. Be honest, we're not going to know. We're going to speculate. And each one of us is going to have a different opinion. But we need to take her, see that those people get some kind of closure there. And not only that, but see that we move forward. And this going to take place in 2022 and 2023. What are we going to do? And also with so your we got to meet with them. And also with your vote. It's a, it's a bigger problem. This is a giant problem. And I'm not saying we got to start saying, somewhere, though, Mike. It's, it's, but I'm saying it's a big picture, though. So yeah, I it, understand that. Take it to be a big picture, not a small picture. There's a whole lot of things that need to be fixed. And that's what I'm saying. You know, the county <laughs> supplies money, the county supplies resources. We do certain things from a commission standpoint. It's a big picture. We need to look at the whole picture. Look at it from all aspects. And it's all, a lot of it need to be corrected. That's what I'm saying. A whole lot of things need to be corrected at the beginning. And all of them need to be corrected. And I want to keep this from you. Just really quick, I, got, I have to go. My apologies for not being able to stay the direction of the whole meeting. But as we um, talk about Dr. Dr. Lady and her work and her work as and what she meant to the county, uh, we all agree that she was awesome and that she was a great resource and that we lost so many. But we were really incredible. But I think that we need to find a way to honor her. And what, as you're asking for information, I'm sorry, I'm fine. 
uh, as, as we're asking for information, if we are to um, to ask for the naming rights policy for Blaine County Schools, and uh, wouldn't it be a joy if she put so much work into the public school system that they would consider naming either the building of the Board of Education or the conference room, the Dr. Antonio Bailey conference room, so that every child that they meet and they have to make a decision that they'll go into a room. That's her name. <laughs> I'm 100% for whatever you decide, uh, and I appreciate that too, brother. Yeah. Uh, that's a good idea. It is a good idea. But let's sit down and, and, and get something ready for the next meeting. If they're not going to come to us, let's go to them. All right. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hayes, that was one of the things that was on you today. I mean, we'll have you come meeting after meeting, you know, and you're sitting and we're talking. But you know there is a problem, but what's the solution? Yeah. I mean, you are talking, but see, and, and we all know how to have safety. We don't care about you see, talking. As long as you don't touch me or, or whatever. And we, we're just talking. But what are some of the solutions that we, we can do? You gotta start with 94 now. Yeah. 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 I'm going to point something out that a lot of people haven't broken this down yet, but uh, when you had the canvas after the last election, I got to see the breakdown. Right. If you looked at the breakdown, and I'm just talking about the at-large board members now. If you look at the breakdown, Vince Rozier was the number one vote getter yeah, in right. early voting. Yes. He was at the bottom on election day. Yeah. Harful Davis was at the top. Right. Wanda told me that they had probably had over 200 requests of people that wanted their early vote back so they could vote just in the Board of Elections race. Wow. That's how you beat them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get on something else here, too, because I'm going to call the men out and I'm going to call the women out here, too. I'm going to tell everybody sitting right here, if there would have been one woman on that board, yeah. this would have never happened. <laughs> Somebody's got to step up. That's true. And I look at it, Pia. <laughs> you know, I've heard a lot of things that were said tonight. Those who don't know me, my name is Arthur Davis. I was just in there. So I'm telling you stop. And I've heard all the conversations, uh, the comments that were made here tonight, and that's what they to me. How the bunch of people that work currently in the school system school employees from every aspect, you name it, transportation, bus drivers, and what it seems to me is that over the last eight, maybe 10 years, the trend has been going down. The things that, not, that need to be happening are not taking place within the Lake County School System. Now, as Mr. Cargill said, it's happening everywhere. You read the, you listen to the news, read the paper, you do see. It's everywhere. Down in New Hampshire County, they fight down there right now. <laughs> fight down there right now. It's everywhere. But we can't worry about New Hampshire County. We got to worry about Blaine County. We have got to fix this now. Because if we don't, it's going to continue to happen. You're going to have the same chain of the reactions going on, and nothing's going to get fixed.